Are Jewish students being denied their civil rights at the University of California, Berkeley? The dean of the law school denies a rash of media reports about Jewish free zones at the university are not true. Dean Erwin Chemerinsky says fewer than 10 student organizations have adopted anti-Israel bylaws, which include a ban against pro-Israel speakers. Appearing on this week's episode of The Global Lane on CBN's news channel, Brandeis Center Chairman Kenneth Marcus calls the law school dean's response outrageous. The notion that it should be, what, acceptable for only nine student organizations at a law school uh, to exclude Jews from opportunities just because there are others that say it's okay? Uh, what would he say if uh, the mayor said there are nine neighborhoods where black, Hispanic, or Chinese people can't live, but don't worry because there are many others where they can live? What if there had been any other context in which any other group was shut out of opportunities? Uh, would a law school dean in the 21st century say not to worry, it's okay to have nine segregated areas, just so long as we have many other areas that aren't segregated. I think he should be embarrassed uh, about having made this argument. It's utterly absurd, ridiculous, and inconsistent with American law. So is this speech ban anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, or just anti-Israel? Well, it's all of those. Uh, 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 pick your poison. Uh, to begin with, it is a method of silencing one side of a political debate. It is a way of saying, uh, we should not permit anyone to participate in a discussion on campus if they are pro-Israel. Uh, this is anti-discourse. It's anti-speech. It's anti-education. Um, it prevents even someone who is critical of Israel from having an informed um, education on, on the topic. But it's also anti-Jewish uh, because the overwhelming majority of American Jews support Israel. Uh, and consider support for Israel to be an important part of their identity as Jewish Americans. So when these groups say no Zionists, they are almost effectively saying no Jews. Dean Chemerinsky, to his credit, concedes that this would block him from speaking to these groups, and he says that it would also potentially block 90% or so of his law students from speaking to these groups. In addition, it would no doubt prevent some of the faculty as well. So it is a considerable assault on free speech, but it's beyond that. It's also discriminatory and an assault on the Jewish community. And you're a graduate of Berkeley Law School. In addition to serving as Assistant Secretary of Civil Rights at the Department of Education, you served as Staff Director at the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. I'd say, you know, Berkeley law and civil rights well. So is this a civil rights violation? Would there be a case here against Berkeley, your alma mater? Well, you know, I am a litigator and a civil rights lawyer, and the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights under law does file lawsuits in cases such as this. I don't want to say right now what we're going to do, but it is hard to look at this circumstance and to argue that the University of California is complying with federal law. They are a public institution. They are bound by the Constitution, including the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, as well as the various uh, civil rights statutes protecting uh, students, protecting uh, lecturers, and protecting others. And what can you tell us about other university campuses? Are we seeing similar bylaws, similar bans on pro-Israel speech? Well, Berkeley is unfortunately exceptional in some respects, but representative in others. What starts in California often spreads, which means that if we don't fight back and fight back hard, we're going to see it in other places. But we have seen um, some roughly similar situations uh, on other campuses, including both undergraduate and law school campuses, in which Jewish students are being marginalized and excluded for their Jewish identity, and specifically for the Zionist aspect of their Jewish identity. What we've been seeing on many campuses is efforts to uh, impeach uh, Jewish pro-Israel members of student government or student judiciaries. We're also seeing efforts to block uh, Jewish student organizations from participating in more general student activities, especially uh, with progressive student organizations. Uh, and we're seeing a general effort to marginalize and exclude uh, the Jewish community to create the notion that Jews 
uh, and the Jewish uh, community and establishment uh, are simply not a normal part of life on college and university campuses. What's happening at Berkeley Law now is in some respects unique, but in some respects it is simply the latest uh, in what is clearly a nationwide trend and an ugly one. And what can our viewers do about it? Well, everyone can respond in a different way. Certainly, uh, if anybody is connected with university and of California in any way, they should make their voices heard directly to the University of, of California. Those who live in the state of California should communicate with legislators uh, as, as well as trustees at the University of California. Uh, but in general, it is useful to have people raising their voices in whatever ways they can, whether it's uh, by um, uh, by writing uh, articles or op-eds or simply comments on uh, website postings uh, or providing support for the various groups that uh, support uh, Jewish students and academics. Also on tonight's episode of The Global Lane, a look at Elon Musk's bid to buy Twitter and some big changes that may be coming to social media and the characteristics Americans want to see reflected in the candidates this election season. Also a look at why some January 6th inmates want to be sent to prison at Guantanamo Bay. Watch the stories and more on The Global Lane. You can find it on the CBN News Channel at 8.30 Eastern. You can also find it on the CBN News app.